right? I think that's the way it goes. But Tampa Bay has plenty of offense to go around. Weber just takes a bite out of there. A high shot by Weber up to, it appears like the collarbone area of Carey Price. I think he's gonna be okay. Yeah, it, it does appear like the collarbone area. Now that is what I call a rough start to your Stanley Cup final before the puck is even dropped. What's going on guys, Rob Peasel back with another playoff breakdown and game one of the Stanley Cup final is in the books. And what we saw was a pretty convincing win by the defending Stanley Cup champions. Now, before we look ahead, a couple things that really jumped out to me in this game. First off, Nikita Kucherov. As we know, he might be playing with an injury, but if you've got him on your playoff pool team, you have absolutely no worries. Two goals and an assist. He built up a healthy lead in the scoring race. He's looking to become the first player to lead the playoffs in scoring in back-to-back -back years since Mario Lemieux did it in 1991 and 1992. The center penalty coming up. Look at Lemieux! Oh my heavens! What a goal! Carey Price allowed five goals for the first time in the playoffs. And that just looked weird. Gets it to Kucherov, swing it in front of Black scores! And finally, this goal in garbage time is actually the first power play goal the Habs have given up since game four of the first round. Okay, so the Lightning take a one, I think, seriously. Game two goes tonight, but if the Habs have proven anything in these playoffs, it's that this series is far from over. And there are plenty of storylines, but for me, there's a player on each team that I really have my eyes on. For the Habs, it's Cole Caulfield. For the Lightning, Steven Stamkos. And let's start with Caulfield, who hardly came out of nowhere. Remember, the Habs took him 15th overall in the 2019 draft, but this year has seen him appear and score for four different teams. Let's break it down. He scored 30 goals in 31 games for the Wisconsin Badgers on his way to winning the Hobie Baker Award. He found the back of the net twice at the World Juniors and wrapped it up with a gold medal around his neck for Team USA. He had three goals in just two games for the Laval Rocket of the AHL before finally making his NHL debut where he just, you know, scored his first two career goals in overtime and now has nine points in the playoffs. Oh yeah, did I mention he was a healthy scratch in the first two games of those playoffs? And now he's in the Stanley Cup final looking to make a little history. He's just the second player ever to win the Hobie Baker Award and appear in the final in the same season. The other player to do it was Neil Broughton back in 1981. But remember, Broughton's Minnesota North Stars lost to the Islanders that year. So Caulfield is looking to pull off the never done before combo of a Hobie Baker Award and a Stanley Cup. Okay, over to Steven Stamkos. And I remember last season watching the Tampa Bay Lightning win the Stanley Cup and Steven Stamkos hoisting that trophy over his head, his first Stanley Cup, and I remember thinking, does he really feel like this is his cup? After all, he played only two minutes and 47 seconds in the playoffs because of an injury. Now, to be clear, I'm not taking anything away from Stamkos' Stanley Cup ring, but this year just feels a bit different. He's played in every game for the Lightning. He sits third in playoff scoring and has a couple of game winners. Long story short, if the Lightning could win this thing again, I think this one's gonna feel a little more rewarding for Stamkos. Okay, before we go, Commissioner Gary Bettman held his annual pre-Stanley Cup final media availability and he hit on a number of topics. First off, expect next season to start on time and a schedule is gonna come out soon. In regards to women's hockey, Bettman said that the National Women's Hockey League and the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association need to get their, quote, ducks in a row. He wants the landscape of professional women's hockey to be unified moving forward at least if they want some help from the NHL. But it was what Gary Bettman said about the NHL's still unresolved participation in the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing that had a lot of people talking. We, we have uh, real concerns about whether or not it's sensible to be participating, having our players participate in us shutting down for the Olympic break. And one of those concerns the commissioner is talking about revolves around time. You see, whether or not the players participate in the Olympics or not is going to affect next year's schedule. And they want to release that schedule really soon. We're talking in between the Stanley Cup final and the draft, which is being held on July 23rd. So as I said, time is of the essence. If this thing is going to get done, it's got to get done sooner rather than later.